بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلق الله محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome again to our program here on Hadi TV called Beyond Belief in this program we're going to try to tackle some of the ideological challenges that we have in today's society and by the grace of God we will try to make sure that we approach everything on a rational level uh, try to intellectualize things in such a way where it appeals to each and every person whichever level they may be in uh, the audience from our viewers and so far we've dealt with a very important issue called a predestination and social predestination where we have focused on whether or not we uh, can see any kind of uh, social compulsion where people are forced into uh, being in some level of society uh, so they won't be held accountable for what it is that they believe in or, or how they view society to to be because of the circumstances that they were born into and it's not possible for you to held, hold someone accountable for something that is beyond their very control they were born into this kind of family and you know there's nothing else that they could have done and therefore we're not able to, um, for example, speak or judge somebody based on their belief. Here, when we use the word judge, we're not talking about judging and, and something that's usually mentioned here and there, but more in the sense of holding someone accountable and responsible ideologically, uh, theologically, for what it is that they believe. Okay, you believe that your Lord is the Son. What is the evidence that you have for this? How are you able to adopt a worldview that would cater to such uh, a belief? Is it rational or irrational to believe in such a thing? This kind of uh, what I this is what I mean by holding someone accountable and judging them based on what it is that they believe. So you evaluate an ideological belief and look at it with a critical eye and of course we know I've, I've also mentioned verses in the Holy Quran and traditions from Ahlul Bayt peace be upon them that make us um, intrigued in wanting to learn uh, further and further about about these kind of things and we really need to look at uh, issues in such a way where uh, we are critical where we uh, look at things and not take them as granted and that's why the program is called Beyond Belief. Because you're not just being uh, spoon-fed. You're not being uh, indoctrinated into something. But rather, you are accepting something wholeheartedly based on correct sound arguments, logical proof, and everything else along those lines. But when we... Uh, dealing with these epistemological foundations we also need to make sure that we look at the social side of these things and that's why in this program it's not going to be purely theological or purely uh, epistemological but it, we're going to try to make it uh, more practical for any person and every person whatever level of education or understanding that they may be for them to, to benefit um, and stay beyond the you know technical terms and uh, probably complex explanations that come along with things in philosophy and theology and epistemology we finished off in our last program by asking this question why is it that there are different people 
Why are there differences in society? Why is it that in this world that we live in, there are different grades and different levels? Is this, again, something that we can see to be fair in the eyes of this Creator? Has it not brought about certain problems within our society that we have seen in history and we can see today? We know for a fact that people are different in their capacities, in their potentials. You have someone who, for example, is very uh, smart, picks up on on things very, very quickly, Uh, maybe even a genius or close to a genius, a high IQ. And then you have someone who isn't that smart, someone who is slower, someone who could have a lower IQ level, someone who isn't that eager and enthusiastic to learn about things. There is a difference between this kind of person and that person. There is a difference between a good person and an evil person. You can't put both of them on one pedestal. They are significantly difficult, different. One person carries this kind of qualities and another person carries the opposite, completely opposite qualities. Now, here we're not talking about condemning this side and praising that side. Here we're talking about different capacities in people, different potentials in people, different likes and interests in people. Someone who wishes to work in the labor industry and wants to, you know, have some kind of routine life, working on, for example, a construction site or working in the farm, Someone else might be more interested in working in a lab. Someone else might be interested in helping people. Someone else might be interested in sitting down and writing books. Every and each person has some kind of significance, their own unique take on how things are. Taking it one step further where We have differences in individuals and as people. We also have differences, a second kind of differences. A difference is we have differences in the social uh, side of things, where in their social status, in their lineage. Like, for example, you might have someone who is a, a chief or a noble person. You might have someone else who, for example, might have been in, uh, up until recently, you know, a child born out of wedlock, uh, who, you know, would not be considered as uh, a part of the mainstream society. You know, they would cast this child who was born out of wedlock out of the mainstream society. Social differences in social status. You also have difference in the subject matter of what a person is pursuing. You know, people see uh, a difference in the way they look and treat a politician than how they would look and treat a farmer or how they would look and treat a doctor or how they would look and treat a um, businessman or a butcher. So here in the the subject of what it is that a person has pursued, there is a difference as well. Now, in this kind of differences between society, what has occurred is there has always been either one of two extremes, where the take is that all of them are absolutely the same and no one should be uh, treating anyone else different than than uh, the way they are and, you know, some kind of, if we could say, socialist kind of um, uh, slogan being used. On another side, we can see that what we um, have repeatedly witnessed throughout his- history is there was always times 
where there was a ways of dealing with these differences in the capacity of a person, in the social status of a person, and also in the subject matter of, of what a person has pursued, we can see that there has been uh, different there have been different ways of how these differences were dealt with in history. They were either dealt with in a bad way, in the sense that there was the valim and the mazlum, there was the oppressor and the oppressed, there was the tyrant and those who were subjected to his tyranny, or we can also see that there was the colonializer and the colonialized, where the colonialist was someone, uh, a, a government or whatnot, who went to a colony and colonial, colonialized it, and they became uh, under the authority of this colonialist hierarchy. We can also have uh, examples that we are also able to see like rich and the poor or the bourgeois uh, level in society, the upper level in society, uh, upper class in society, lower class in society, middle class in society. You know, these kind of, if we can call them caste systems that came into existence. Now, that was one way of how differences in society was dealt with. And, of course, you know, when we look at Islam, we can see that uh, this is not the correct way or correct of approach of how to classify people in a society. But we can even see it um, throughout the history of the Muslim Ummah where there were oppressors, there were oppressed, there were, were rich and there were poor. There were people who were a part of some kind of caste system, even though they might not have you know, their own particular uh, names. And we, can, and we can give many more examples of how uh, differences in society was treated in uh, a bad way. What was the outcome of this? The outcome of this was that in most of these scenarios, not all, but in most of these scenarios, my brothers and sisters, religion was also involved. A religion was misused and misinterpreted to the advantage of those who had greater power. And this we can see um, among a lot of the khulafa themselves, whether it be from Bani Umayya, from Bani Abbas, and also onwards, we can also the, see this um, in uh, the the church system that has existed throughout history, where there was a misuse of power under the pretense of religion. And unfortunately, one of the problems that this led to was that people started to hate religion. People started to feel distant from religion. You are claiming that you don't believe in favoritism. You are saying that in akramakum and Allahi atqakum, the best of you, the most noble of you is one who has the best of you in morals. In akramakum and Allahi atqakum, in the eyes of God, the best of you is one who has the greatest level of uh, morals. So how is it that in this particular case, you know, you are com going completely against it through your favoritism by bringing... Um, this particular person closer to you or by mistreating uh, the subjects under you or by doing vulm and wronging others or by not tending to the lower uh, class um, who 
are suffering financially and all of these other things. Of, po- of course, someone is going to react in a negative way and say, well, if this is what, or if this is who represents religion, then what is left from religion for me to believe in? And if we can try to uh, pinpoint one of the reasons as to why there have been people who uh, became either agnostic or either atheist or rebelled against religion and left religion, one reason would be this very issue where they saw double standards in the uh, religious authority and they were not able to correctly uh, judge this in a healthy way and therefore they just said you know what they're going we're just going to leave this and forget it we're not going to um, bear all these kind of slogans that are go nothing beyond just verbal statements or nothing beyond theories in books you're creating this kind of halo around you and you know you're not acting upon nothing that you are preaching and so um, when it does come to these kind of if we can call them religious institutes in some kinds in some places during certain eras in our society we can see that um, rulers also misused this as well and sometimes there were cases where uh, religious scholars and uh, authoritative figures became puppets for rulers who were tyrants as well and this is what we call wa'adh as-salatin where they became the spokesperson for the sultan for the ruler but in return um, they needed to praise the ruler and turn a blind eye against what it is that they might be doing in perpetrating any kind of tyranny or oppression against the people now how are we able to uh, refute this uh, misconception how can we answer this how are we able to uh, deal with this kind of tragedy that we've seen throughout history inshallah we're going to go for a short break and we will be back to briefly answer this question and elaborate on it even further I know because I usually hear the music in my um Rabbuna Rabbul Kulubi wa huwa allamul ghuyub fi shuruqi wa fi al-ghurubi nuruhu yahdi al-asam Rabbuna Rabbul Kulubi wa huwa allamul ghuyub fi shuruqi wa fi al-ghurubi nuruhu yahdi al-asam ربنا الهادي الودود فضله ملء الوجود عفوه خير وجود فارتجي دوما رضا ربنا الهادي الودود فضله ملء الوجود عفوه خير وجود فارتجي دوما رضا ربنا الحي الرقيب يقبل العبد المنيب فا 
فهو رحمن مجيب للدعاء ومن دعا ربنا الحي الرقيب يقبل العبد المنيب فهو رحمن مجيب للدعاء ومن دعا ربنا الهادي الودود فضله ملء الوجود عفوه خير وجود فارتجي دوما رضا ربنا الهادي الودود فضله ملء الوجود السلام عليكم ورحمة الله and welcome back to your brothers and sisters to our program here on Hadi TV called Lie, called Beyond Belief. Now, just while we were pondering on this very important issue of why have people come to realize that there are differences in society and instead of working to eliminate these differences, people fed off of these differences and created castes in society and uh, oppressed people and wronged people and became opportunists and sometimes they even used religion to their advantage and to the misadvantage of what it is that they need to truly represent now how are we able to solve this what is the correct approach of looking at why there are differences in society and looking at it in a positive way that would help and assist others. The first thing that we need to do is we need to lay a precedent, some kind of rule of thumb principle that we work with in making sure that we're going to use this in every kind of scenario that we come across. And that is that we have acknowledged that there is a supreme being and this supreme being is called God in English, Allah in Arabic, Khuda in Farsi, and any other language. You know, some we probably um, the viewers know that we insist on using the word Allah because it is a an attribute that combines all of the attributes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So all of these different features and attributes of, of God have been united in this one sifa, or uh, all of his sifat in this one name, and that is the name of Allah. Allah as a word in Arabic cannot be pluralized. You can't say Allah in the plural sense. Whereas with the, the word, for example, God, you can easily say God's. And also when it comes to something like using the word Allah, um, it cannot be, it's beyond gender as well. So you cannot use it in the, for example, feminine um, text because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond gender. Whereas in English you can easily say goddess. So why is it that for example, you might come across some places where they might say, oh, well, Allah is the, the Muslim God and they don't believe in the God God and differences like that, you know. And you come to realize that these are just very petty things, but, if, but yet they're still continuously uh, mentioned. The point here is that the uh, first fundamental principle that we're dealing with um, and we always need to remember is that I've, I believe in this supreme being who is Almighty God, creator of the heavens and the earth. Um, he is one who I believe is infinite. And in Allah's infinity, in God's infinity, in his uh, superiority, he has very important features. The first of these important features is he is, has knowledge. He is someone, he is a, a being, and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one who knows everything. 
Also, he has power over everything. You know, and that's why they say omnipotent. Um, uh, omniscient and omnipotent. And with Almighty God having knowledge and also him being adil, he is just, he has adil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also qadr, he has power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also hakim, he has wisdom. And the rest of these uh, characteristics and features and attributes that are fundamental to Almighty God. Now, when we look at all of these uh, together, we can see that God, in His infinite knowledge, in His infinite power, in His infinite wisdom, has laid down laws for people to implement and for people to follow. Yes, He does make sure that people remember and come to understand as the Quran itself says قُلْ كُلٌ يَعْمَلْ عَلَى شَاكِلَتِهِ Say, every person acts upon or according to their potential, to their characteristics, to who it is that they um, have become, or what kind of uh, interests they might have. You can't force uh, a butcher to become a politician. And you can't force someone who is of this particular level in understanding to become someone who is of that. You can't throw someone who is has no interest in uh, books all of a sudden for them to become uh, a scholar or for them to become a librarian. And so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this uh, ayah, قُلْ كُلٍّ يَعْمَلْ عَلَىٰ شَاكِلَتِهِ فَرَبُّكُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنْ هُوَ أَهْدَىٰ سَبِيلًا So God knows more or He is more knowing that, uh, for who it is that is going to be guided in this path or who will be in this particular direction and everything else. If I was to manifest this kind of principle in my life, where I believe that God is infinite in these particular characteristics that I mentioned, in His knowledge, in His wisdom, in His power, and in His justice, then everything else will easily fall into place as far as why are these particular things happening to different people. We're going to be speaking about something which we all know uh, exists in the world, and that is evil. You know, what is the concept of evil, the problem of evil? evil, And why do, this is an important question, and we can uh, consider this to be homework for uh, the viewers, why do bad things happen to good people? You know, if we do believe that this God, this supreme being, is all knowledgeable and all powerful. He has the power to, you know, uh, eliminate something bad happening to a good person. Why does he allow allow someone to suffer? Why does someone need to go through uh, so many difficulties? You know, what is God getting out of this? You know, what what kind of message is he trying to show? You know, of course, that's a very important question that we need to ask. So, if we were to manifest this kind of understanding in our lives, in God's infinite knowledge, God's infinite wisdom, God's infinite uh, justice, and God's uh, infinite power, then we will have uh, a broader understanding as to why there could be differences in society. Sometimes, you know, it's a a way of us dealing with any of this or all of this is for us to say, well, there must be a reason. And that reason could be beyond my scope of understanding. That's being humble. You know, we need to be humble as well. We need to remember that 
just because you don't understand something, that doesn't mean that you just completely reject it. You shouldn't reject something because you weren't able to come up with a conclusion based on your own understanding. Yes, we need to rely on our intellect. We need to make sure that we don't just copy-paste. We need to be free thinkers, if that it would be the correct words to use here. But we also need to make sure that, well, maybe the shortcoming is from me. Instead of pointing your finger at God and saying, well, God, you know, why did you do this? Maybe the shortcoming is from me. Maybe I wasn't able to grasp onto this concept in a comprehensive way. Maybe I wasn't able to look at it um, from different angles in, and I shouldn't be rejecting things so quickly. And you know, someone who does reject things and someone who is adamant about their view and someone who, you know, uh, re refuses to give in uh, even though, you know, th they don't have that knowledge in that area, you know, that's a level of being egotistic. And uh, pride can get to anyone and it's never going to be good. So, you know, just because a person uh, reads books and um, they think they are with their degree, that they have all the solutions to everything and anything that doesn't suit their way of thinking, then all of a sudden they reject. Why is it that we can't say that this is uh, one of the many secrets of the world? You know how many things we are yet to discover in the world? Do you know how many things we are yet to discover in our own selves as human beings? You know, scientifically, um, in, in nature and in our own selves, there is, are so many things that we have absolutely no idea about. You know, and this is what scientists them, themselves say. Why can't we also attribute this to be among the many secrets of creation. You know, I'm not saying, you know, just shut it all down and, you know, just say, well, you know, God's, this is God's will and nobody has any say. No, this is not the uh, correct, healthy approach. But let's say for argument's sake, you might have to say, well, you know, oppression, this person was oppressed, but oppress, being oppressed is something relative. Yes, he or she did go through some uh, unfortunate uh, calamities and they did suffer. It was difficult for them, you know, but they're going to be uh, living a very felicious life in the hereafter and they will be very, very happy in the hereafter. That is a reward, you know. So an oppressed is very, in, in, very soon will also be one who is going to be blessed by being very fortunate in the eyes of God. Why? Because this is the worldview that we have. We've adopted a worldview where this very short span of life that we are living in is not the end of creation. It's not going to be the end of my life as well. Maybe my physical body will cease to uh, move and exist, but I will continue into the next life and continue on from there. So, again, there's another thing that we have to remember that there are ways of interpreting these things in a positive way. And that's what we're going, also going to be speaking about in our next session, you know. We're not shutting the, the argument down, nor are we saying, well, this is the will of God, nor are we saying, you know, um, uh, it's, it's all going to be relative, but we're trying to give justifications before we enter into the, the, the topic itself. Maybe it's just ignorance. I just don't know. I have jahl towards this particular issue. Allahu a'lam, as we all say. God knows best. You know, I am really, really not aware about what this is. Because one thing that we always need to remember is one of those four things, as I said. Hikmah, God's wisdom. There, God, God who is 
Hakim and a Hakim, a one who is Hakim will always put things in the appropriate proper place. Almighty God is not never going to do something without there being a reason. Sometimes the reason we know, sometimes the reason we don't know. It's beyond our knowledge. Now, you as a Muslim, you have submitted to God. You believe in showing and expressing your servitude and your devotion to God. You believe in submitting to God. And that's what Taslim and Islam means. And you want to also submit and devote yourself to this manifestation of God's divine infinity in his existence and also in these qualities and attributes. And that means you also need to submit to the will of Allah, Almighty God of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we can see this in the, in the life of our Imams. You know, look at Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, on the day of Karbala, where he kept on repeating and repeating the same words that I have submitted to your will, O God. I have acknowledged uh, your power, O God, and um, I am content and happy with the fate and destiny that you have uh, given me. So here it's all about relying on God and having trust in God. And if you do trust God, then you're also going to trust His judgment towards you and Him being the best of judges, as the Quran says, Ahkam al Hakameen. Now, what about with the Imams? Again, you know, when, when it comes to something like the Ma'sumin, like the Holy Prophet, praise and peace be upon him, or the Imams, alayhim salam, you also need to submit to them and their will as well. You know, they are your authority. They have, as being the successors of Almighty God on this earth, as representing Almighty God on this earth, they have authority over you. And... Even in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that an Nabi, that the Holy Prophet ha- has authority and wilaya over the mu'mineen. In the sense that you have no right to question or reject or oppose. And everything that they say, the ma'sumin alayhim salam comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in reference, from, in reference to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi Almighty God says وَمَا يَنْتَقُوا عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُحَىٰ He does not speak out of vanity what he says comes from revelation so taking it one step further after our servitude and our devotion and submission to Almighty God we also have that level of submission to our ma'sumin, peace be upon them, our imams, our infallibles, our prophets, uh, our prophets and our imams. And then after that, our ulama, the hadith says, al-ulama warathatul anbiya. The ulama, the scholars, are the heirs of the prophets. They have inherited the prophets in their qualities, in their ilm, they have devoted 60, 70, 80 years of their life in order for them to preserve the religion. They are the backbone of our religion, these great ulama of ours, the righteous ones, the noble ones, those who fit all the correct criteria that we all uh, know about. And therefore, you need to look at them as an authority. They have... Um, that level in the hierarchy of authority, in them being revered, in them being respected, not blindly followed. You don't look at them in, in a, a, as, as a subject purely and as sacred purely, and that's it. No, ulama and ilm is sacred, but the individual is sacred subject to all of these conditions and all of the different characteristics that they have. And that's why if 
a particular alim might, for example, you know, slip off the path for a bit, then that sanctity is gone. Doesn't mean that we, you know, abuse uh, that person in any way or form, but, you know, that uh, it means that it, you don't just follow someone in good or bad or anything else. And um, there's, here there's the balance. You don't question each and every issue, nor do you completely submit to the, the alim. And in the mannerism that we have as Muslims, we know that not every question is a good question. Not every intention that is behind every question is a good intention. You might be argumentative. You might be just stubborn. You might want to ask only for the sake of testing the person. You might only be hearing what it is that they're saying in their answer to you and not listening all for the sake of you wanting to throw another question at them. And this kind of futile uh, discussion or argument is not going to get you anywhere, nor will it get anybody else anywhere. And this is, again, where being humble needs to take place. You know, and look at the hadith that Imam Ali alayhi salam says about the etiquette of asking a question. Ask with humbleness. Make sure that you don't interrupt the person who is answering the initial question that you asked. It might take a while for them to answer the question because they need to lay down certain things in principle in order for you um, to be able to understand comprehensively. Now, why is it that we need to remember that we need to have an element of faith in all of this? This is purely because when it comes to our understanding of um, Almighty God and our belief in God, He intervenes in all of these things. He's reminding us, as it says in the Bible, as it says in the Quran, that there are certain reasons as to why issues are going to happen to you, whether they be ga- bad or whether they be good. As for your knowledge, don't rely completely on your knowledge, because always remember there will be someone or something more knowledgeable than you. The Quran says, فَوْقَ وَفَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ Above any, every person that has a level of knowledge is someone who is more knowledgeable than them. So, be humble, have that humility, always try to look at things in a collective manner and the element of faith, have tawakkul, have reliance on God. Make sure that you beseech and you pray to God to enlighten you, to inspire you, to open up the horizons of your understanding in, in certain things. A computer can memorize a lot more than what we can. So it's not an issue of obtaining knowledge more than it, and it, it is an issue of what and how that knowledge is going to uh, radiate in your heart, reflect in your heart in a positive way and illuminate your heart in a positive way where it's going to lead you somewhere. It's going to give you a better understanding of this puzzle and life. And that's what beyond belief truly means. We're going to continue on speaking about how we are able to uh, act upon this kind of understanding of relating God's infinite knowledge, God's infinite power, God's infinite justice, God's infinite wisdom in our practical lives so we can deal with the differences in society and not wrong any person who might be below us or might be above us in the different social levels and classifications that we might have and in our view ultimately come to a conclusion that none of that is important because in akramakum and allahi atqakum inshallah we will see you again very soon and on behalf of myself and everyone here in the studio keep us in your dua wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Illallah, la ilaha 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 illallah, la ilaha